ejection coming from the southern hemisphere still. The uh, event is mostly southward. The expansion is still very vast and uh, we'll have to look at Soho to see more detail on exact projection, but I would not put it out of the realm of a glancing blow despite the fact that it is so south. Uh, basically this is the one I believe I talked about earlier. This activity right here is really what makes me think that it's going to be coming northward enough that it's going to impact Earth. It is moving very very quickly, so I think that most of it will miss us. But as you see, it curls up, and the activity goes all the way up to here, and the CME is reaching from this point all the way across to where the greatest mass of the CME was from here. So this right here is a, uh, this is an absolutely gorgeous CME or corona mass ejection. And in fact, uh, it's the more descriptive term would be an interplanetary chronomass ejection than I see me. So if you ever see that phrase, that just means that a chronomass ejection has escaped the gravitational pull and density of the sun to be well, interplanetary, as it were. <laughs> Additionally, we are seeing constant activity here from the area I've been watching since this has shown up on the sun, uh, on the Earth-facing disk. And it's starting to appear to be reaching further outward than it used to be. So it may be, <laughs> this has been holding on though for dear life, 
but it may be very soon for this to finally actually become a CME for the plasma that's over here. We will see. I keep saying it, but it hasn't happened yet. It just shows that the sun has its own timing, despite how much we may uh, observe and analyze. It's uh, nothing's a guarantee. And we had an M class flare, an M 1.5, I believe it is. And let's see, where are you? Best way to look at that is Angstrom 131, which shows us the most intense points of energy for the flux. And we'll see a bright flash for that solar flare. And there you are. Absolutely gorgeous. Multiple flares just constantly going in that same area where I'm waiting for that chrome mass ejection to finally happen. That's a beautiful mass of activity right here with a uh, equatorial uh, loop connecting these two regions as well. Or a series of loops. But as such, nothing of dire straits. Everything is very beautiful and wonderful to observe. And we may see some increased activity. For the most part, it's not going to be anything that's uh, of any concern. Only satellite operators and things like that of na that nature will have to concern themselves about that. Uh, the reason being that when a chronomass ejection even small impacts with the magnetosphere it creates a situation where the density of the upper atmosphere that doesn't impact us in the nature of where we have to go about our day-to-day -day business it will mess with uh, satellite comms and satellite orientation things of that nature including satellite drag and this requires a constant uh, monitoring and even sometimes adjusting the orbit to ensure that it doesn't fly off into space or come back down to the uh, Earth's atmosphere and burn up. The fun jobs of the satellite operators. I had to do a little bit of that in the past. But let's take a look at 171 angstroms, looking at some of this loop activity. And we can see here, looking at this, once again, this beautiful chronomass ejection that goes all the way up to here, and all the way over here. And once again, we can see the beautiful loops that are connecting these two regions. They're causing a lot of situations. And then we can see the activity coming off the end here on the western end to where I'm waiting for this to eventually <laughs> be a chronomass ejection. I've been saying this since it showed up on the Earth-facing disk. Hasn't happened yet, but it is definitely something to look for. And as we see, this is currently where we're at. Beautiful imagery, courtesy of SDO satellite, which is an LOE, uh, LEO, Low Earth Orbit. There we go. Well, I hope everyone has a wonderful day. And uh, well, cheers and science on.